Okay. Marty, tell me some of your work are shown here yes. at the Anbani Cultural Center. Could you tell me what it speaks about? So um, I was invited to this uh, to be in part of a group show called Sangam, and Sangam is uh, translated as the confluence. So I think their first exhibition was trying to create a bridge between east and west. Um, Sangam means the joining of three rivers. It's the trinity of rivers. Mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, it's actually quite a beautiful and a highly. I mean, it's very auspicious in India, but it's also very un, it's rare. But I think India is a kind of country where it's quite natural to have the melting, the meeting, and the melting of many cultures. Um, it is what is it? Five thousand year old civilization, Hindu, Islamic, Sikh. Mm -hmm. Persian, and we have influence from everywhere and all over the world. So, this really is the country. It's really a melting pot in India. So, but what about your work precisely? So, my work are um, four four pieces from um, two, between about two thousand eight, um, really at the very beginning of my career when I started making um, more ambitious sculptures, and certainly the very early Bindi paintings that I. Um, was experimenting with. In fact, the, the large diptych was showed first in my Paris gallery, my first solo show with um, Perrotin. Ah. So it was really nice to see it. And look how interesting it is that the work went from India all the way to Paris and came back to India. Nice. Um, yeah, it's nice. So it belonged to a French collector? I think, yeah, I think it's changed hands and um, came back to India in the end. Ah, to really? Bombay. Yeah. So what, do, what does the work speak about? Um, for me, the earlier the Bindi works, are, and certainly this is what people recognize a lot of my work for, and the Bindi paintings are really about, I suppose after 15 years of making them, I had kind of realized that they are a search for me, a search for a, um, almost an awakening perhaps, or a search for consciousness. Um, the Bindi really is the metaphor for your third eye, and your third eye is the seat of your consciousness. And so I suppose what I'm trying to do with these works is find a place of, uh, that's deep within myself or, and that has the possibility to be deep within you and there is a connection. Um, and you know, the, the Bindi is the circle, it is the quintessential um, shape of everything from your cell to, um, to the infinite loop. And when there are animals with bindis? So, you know, the animal forms for me have always been something I've, I mean, I like, I love nature and I like this idea that when I, when I make animals or when I make works around the idea of the animal, the animalistic, the hybrid human form, I'm talking about the psychologies of people. And when I usually make people-ish forms or, or, or I use the human form, sometimes I give them very animalistic tendencies to talk about psychology, the deep psychologies of how we are as human beings. So the whale heart is the biggest heart in the world. I mean, the blue sperm whale, which is, this is, I took this from a, um, an anatomical drawing. In 2008, it was very interesting. Uh, there was no internet, really. So when you searched on a whale heart, you got like two things. Um, and today, if you search on the heart of a blue sperm whale, there's like 350 course, pages, right? Yeah. So I actually ended up writing to a friend of mine in, in a New Zealand who worked in a whaling museum. Wow. And I asked her, could you please help me? I'm looking for the image of a blue sperm whale's heart because I actually don't have one. And I didn't have one then. And I was just fascinated by the idea of what would it be to have the largest heart in the world that is the size of a small car. Um, that a child could climb through the aorta of its main, you know, its main valve, and that it pumps like, you know, hundreds of liters through its heart, blood pumps through its heart every day. But what is the metaphor of the largest heart in the world, and what does it mean when it's been taken out of the body, um, and it sort of stands like this great carbuncle in the middle of the room? It's just uh, this idea of that we. It's, yeah, it's, it's universal, it's love, it's this idea of what do we need now, we need big... We and need it hearts. looks like a tree, in fact. Yeah, but it also just looks With like... With the roots, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's for me also, I mean, I, I, can, I'm a, I can have that license to also create extra, because it has to stand. At some point I always knew that, how do I, how do I make this work 
sit <laughs> in the space. Huh? So eventually it was like, oh, well, yeah, let's... But your heart is... Your body is a tree. I mean, your body is like exactly. a tree. And if you look at the central nervous system, it is not... Your heart doesn't end just because it's the shape of a heart. It continues uh, within your central nervous system. Your vagus nerve is the largest nerve in your body and it connects your gut to your brain. Um, now everyone just talks about the gut being your main brain and not the brain that sits here. Your brain is actually in your stomach. So. Yes. I mean, I'm fascinated by the body. I'm fascinated by the human, the animal, uh, the animalistic, the hybrid body, the possibilities of the self, actually. And uh, so, do you think this center can be a game changer for the art in India? I hope so. I mean, I hope that this is the first of, and there'll be many copycats. We're, it's a really, really big country, and we need many museums in India. And, and we, you don't have enough? No, no, not at all. And I don't think, uh, and I think this is a great beginning and mm -hmm. a change, and I hope people come, and I hope the programming is going to be dynamic and exciting and inclusive. And education is should be part of the program because children have to see art, they have to know who they are, where they're from, and they have to have access to art because art is really important. Merci. Thank you.